I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 6. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I host this episode with my partner, Johnny D. Hey, as you going today, my friend? Yeah, yeah, fine. And today, it's an honor and a privilege. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, man, that's super awesome. We work so hard because he is... Uh, he, He's very that, busy. Yes, busy. he is very busy, and that's hard, a very hard to, uh, to reach in and today ladies and gentlemen we have the pleasure to receive a living legend oh, yeah. in an, in our uh, wonderful uh, wrestling industry he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2010 He's been a top villain in wrestling for over a decade <laughs> is also many champion like bam bam bigelow sid Vicious King Kong Bundy, Steve Austin, Kama, name it. He is also a former WWF tag team champion with IRS. Uh, give it up. Money Inc. Yes, uh, give it up for the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> what's up, fellas? How are you today? Yes, Fine. we're going super great. And as I said in private, God damn, that's awesome that you are in front of uh, of us for this wonderful interview. So we're going forward with the first question. The first question? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, Mr. DiBiase, you were trained by uh, the Funk Brothers, I mean, uh, Dory Funk uh, Jr. and Terry. Uh, what kind of coaches were they? Well, the, the, the funny thing about me is I, I never went to a wrestling school. Okay. Ah, Back when I got in the business, there was no wrestling school to go to. Uh, basically, uh, if, 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 you, if you loved wrestling and you wanted to get into wrestling, a lot of guys would just buddy up to somebody. And back then, in those days, you know, somebody had to like you enough to bring you into the business if they thought that you could. Now, in my case, I was born and raised in professional wrestling. My late father, Iron Mike DiBiase, was very good good friends with the Funk family. Okay. And, I mean, I've known the Funk since I was a little boy. Uh, I, I had actually, uh, when my, my father died in 1969, yeah. had a heart attack in the ring in Lubbock, Texas, yeah. when he was working for the Funks. With our early, early. And, and so I went and I finished high school in uh, southern Arizona. And I had actually signed a letter of intent to play football, American football, uh, at the University of Arizona. I turned my TV on one day, and there's wrestling. I hadn't seen any wrestling for three years. And not only is it wrestling, but it's it's the Funks wrestling. It's their okay. it's their show, and they were coming to Tucson. Tucson was about 80 miles from where I lived. Anyway, uh, so I went to see them, and... Uh, Terry Funk, uh, he said, hey, Ted, he says, you know, he, he says, if you're going to go to Arizona, that's great. But he says, I I could probably get you a recruiting trip to West Texas State. And if, if for nothing else, just come back and see everybody. And so I, I went to what I, I took that recruiting trip to West Texas State. And, and fellas, that's all it took for me, because in my entire life, there's only one thing I ever wanted to do. I wanted to be just like my dad. I wanted to wanted to play football and I wanted to be a wrestler. And so uh, by going to West Texas State, I, I tell everybody, I said, I didn't go to West Texas State to become a professional football player. I went to West Texas State to become a professional wrestler. Now, now listen to the guys that went through West Texas State that became wrestlers. Frank Goodish, which is Bruiser yeah. Brody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stan Hansen. Yeah. Uh, both of the Funks, 
Tito Santana, yeah, myself, Tully Blanchard, uh, um, uh, Barry Windham, uh, and I think I think I'm, I'm missing a, cu- a couple. So, That's but there was a point. bunch of guys that went to West Texas State that went on to become pro wrestlers. Wow. And we remember you were the, the North American heavyweight champion for the WWWF yeah. back in the days. But why did you leave the WWWF during your first tent in 1979? You know, when I, it, I, it was just, you know, in wrestling, it's all timing. And, uh, you know, uh, at, at that time, you know, Vince Sr. was Vince McMahon Sr. was still the boss. Uh, and I was doing very good wrestling, but Vince Jr. was was uh, you know I think about to about to take over and actually the North American Heavyweight Championship that I got in New York. You know I, I mentioned to them I said listen I I told Vince Sr. I said you know uh, Cowboy Bill Watts you know and uh, who's in Mid South. Yeah, and it's all yeah. wrestling. Their, their champion is the North American heavyweight champion as well. Oh, okay. okay. And so that makes sense. I dropped the North American heavyweight title to uh, uh, Pat Patterson. Okay. Okay. And so they made up a story that Pat Patterson went off to some uh, wrestling tournament, in Rio de Janeiro, and everybody puts up their championship belt. And he came back. So what they did is they renamed the belt the Intercontinental. Okay, if he lived the title, okay, yeah, the fusion of wow. the title. Okay, yeah, really that's the, that was the reason power. for the change in the name was that he didn't want to step on anybody's toes. Oh, that's very interesting. So, go ahead, okay, of course. Uh, okay, uh, who was behind uh, the million dollar man gimmick? You or Vince McMahon? Uh, it's a Vince McMahon original, okay, okay. Oh, and, okay. I, and I've told a lot of people, you know, uh. I, I think if Vince McMahon could have been a character in his own show, he'd have been me. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's what it, what he would have been. So, uh, and and the way that the, the links that he went to, I mean, and that's just the way Vince was. I think that's how Vince has been so successful. Mm-hmm. You know, if he if he even believes in something, he just goes all out. And and he told me, he says, now listen, he says, we're going to try to make the public believe as much as we possibly can, that you're really this guy. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, how are you going to do that? And he says, well, you're going to fly everywhere you go, first class. He says, you get to the you know, the town, uh, uh, limousine to hotel, hotel to Coliseum, Coliseum to hotel, hotel, back to airport and out of town. And he also said, he says, you're going to be, be making enough money. Of course, back then, the, the, you know, the, they didn't, they didn't pay for, everything uh but yeah, it's, 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 you're, you're gonna be making enough money he said, i don't want you to be in at the dewdrop bin or or the holiday and he says i want you to be staying in first class hotels you know hyatt marriott da, 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 da. <laughs> and, I, was, I said so okay it's a tough job somebody's uh, got that, <laughs> yeah that was a different era if you know what i mean so yeah and at the survivor series 1990 you team up with uh the great uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine and uh, the Anki Tank Man against uh, the Dusty Road, Coco Beware, and the Art Foundation. You announce a mystery partner who turned out to be the Undertaker, marking the debut of a significant era. Looking back more than 30 years ago, what is your reaction to the Undertaker's career and how do you feel as the first person to announce? one of the most iconic wrestling legends of all time. Well, you know, of course, nobody knew at that time, you know, this was a new brand new character, yeah, uh, untested. And, uh, you know, I just happened to be the guy who been spent to introduce him. Yeah. And, you know, but no, I don't think anybody had any idea how iconic that the Undertaker was going to become. Yeah. And, and, and he did, I mean, you know, he just blew it out of the water. And, uh, I, I just was fortunate to have been the band handpicked to, uh, to introduce him to the wrestling world. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, during, uh, nearly 10 years, Virgil was your bodyguard and we remember many uh, vignettes, uh, promos and feuds with him. Why did you and Virgil never reunite after that? Well, it just, you know, 
everything changes and and uh you know you know we were at that time when i was uh physically wrestling you know um okay and and so i was gonna i mean virgil was like he was like the valet, the bodyguard. I mean, you couldn't get away with that today. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what he was, that was what he was hired for, to open the doors and do do all that stuff in public. And, and uh, and you know, and, and, and Virgil's real name is Mike, and he's a good guy, and I've known him for years. But when we, when I stopped, when I left, when I stopped actively wrestling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Then there was no more. There was no more need for it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Understand. There was no more need for it. But I think I I, re, I do remember that. Uh, you know, I I I, uh, I started doing commentary uh, for the WWF. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then there were then that's when guys started going leaving the WWF and going over to uh, uh, what was the other. Uh, what, what was the WC? WC? Yeah, they were going to, over to WCW. Yeah, you know, right. Hogan went, and this guy went, and that guy went. You know, and you know, hindsight being twenty twenty, you know, I probably would have been better off if I'd have just stayed where I was. Yeah. But I, you know, it was the first opportunity to get a, you know, a contract that actually had an amount on it. Mm-hmm. You know, those first contracts with, that we all signed with Vince, there was no money amount. You were not guaranteed any amount yeah. of money. You know, yeah. uh, and again, that's because he was the only game in town. So yeah. now there's the competition and, and it is what it is. And I had a guaranteed contract for three years. And at the first year was so much money. The next year was so much more money. And the last year was uh, uh, even more than that. And they couldn't cut me. And even if they didn't want to use me, all I could do is send me home and send, keep sending the checks. Uh, so that's why, that's, that's why I, that's, you know, that's why I went. Okay. And about money, everybody's got a prize for the million dollar man is an important cash phrase throughout your entire career. Of course, we remember you purchased the WWF world heavyweight championship from Andre the giant after Andre defeated, uh, all Kogan, uh, what that the first plan or where others option considered. Well, that was, well, that was the whole idea. The whole yeah. idea was that, you know, I mean, that, that was done on Saturday night, uh, main event. And that's the first time that professional wrestling was on live, uh, uh, network television since the 1950s. Okay. okay. And, and it was, you know, it was a big deal. And so, you know, Andre, uh, you know, beats Hulk, you know, and of course I, uh, I don't know where that extra referee came from, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, and so, uh, and, and then that's like, because I was boasting that I could buy anything, including the world title. And so Andre yeah. wins and he takes the belt instead of putting it on, he puts it around my waist. <laughs> and I, once again, I've proven that I can, uh, I can buy anything. So, you know, and then the WWE, of course they go, you know, you can't do that. And so here there's the dilemma. I said, they, they can't give it back to Hogan because technically Hogan lost. Mm-hmm. They, they can't, you know, give it back to Andre because Andre won't take it. He's been paid off. And they can't give it to me because I didn't really win it. So what do you do? You have a tournament to declare a new champion. And the mm-hmm. tournament was WrestleMania four. Yeah. Trump and, Plaza. Yes, in Trump Plaza. And that was totally a good idea. That's a oh, genius yeah. idea because... How you can push a villain with two top characters in the main roster? It is what it is. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. After that, you made the decision to create your own wrestling belt, uh, the Million Dollar Championship. And there were rumors surrounding its creation. Do you have any idea what kind of materials? were used for the title. Some people said it was made of diamond, 24 karat goals and ruby. Okay, the the million dollar belt and uh hold on, I'm uh, sorry. Okay. No problem.
Ah, ah, awesome. <laughs> That's the original, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, th this is a replica. Okay, oh, this is a replica. This is a, this is a replica. Okay. Real belt. Wow. The original is uh, at the Hall of Fame? The real belt is, uh, yeah, if if they ever actually have a Hall of Fame. Oh, okay will be displayed there but the real belt 1988 when it was made it was worth forty thousand dollars oh god and I, I had to carry a uh like a declaration page like anytime i came into canada you know oh, yes. back and forth i had you know i, I had to declare its, its value wow. and uh all the stones in the belt were they were they were what you call cubic zirconium okay and and so i i didn't know what that was i asked my wife she says it's almost a diamond <laughs> oh okay okay yeah. and so and there there's seven and there were 700 of those in the in the face of the belt wow. and, and at that time that was like about 50 bucks a piece times 700 that's 35 grand right there Man. and the and the and the rib the joke is on the back of the belt on the back of the original belt that nobody could see right at the top were three diamonds, real diamonds. Oh, and I, and I, when I first looked at that, I said, what is that? And they goes, well, Ted, those are real diamonds. I said, why? Nobody's going to see them. <laughs> <laughs> and they oh. said, well, if anybody ever asked you, are the diamonds in the bell real? You can say yes. And you won't be lying. <laughs> You want the best, you got the best. <laughs> awesome. You won the WWF Tag Team titles with IRS, of course, but we also remember that you won the AGPW Triple Crown Championship with none other than Stan the Lariat Anson. For you, which accomplishment is the most significant between these two uh, accomplishments? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, uh, the... Uh... What was the Different. first one? What was the first one? The what? The first one was uh, oh, tag your, your tag team title with IRS. Okay. Of All right. Well, of course that was, you know, and you know, obviously that that was that was tremendous. And and uh, IRS, my Mike's his real name. He's a yeah. he's a great guy, and and we we gelled very well together, and mm -hmm. uh, and that was very a very very important to me. You know, but and but then the thing with Stan Hansen, you know, uh, you know, I became uh, uh, like a, you know, what's that, uh, a, a world tag team champion with Stan Hansen in Japan. Yeah, and and there's a big difference. No, oh, this is very oh, yeah. There's a big difference. I mean, uh, you know, I guess the one obviously that would be most recognized mm -hmm. was the one with with the IRS because. Obviously, it's the WWE, and it's it's you know it's it's worldwide 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 now. Uh, but you know, I you know Stan Hansen again was one of those guys. He's another one of those guys that that you know went to West Texas State and played football, and then went on to become a wrestler. And um, so that was I would say it was a toss up. It was equally important for 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 for, for me personally, anyway. Wow. Okay. After your uh, prestigious uh, wrestling career, you managed uh, many important wrestlers, like we said uh, earlier, earlier in the interview. Uh, you started the wrestling careers of The Undertaker and uh, uh, the, the uh, Stunning Steve, uh, Austin? Steve Austin, yeah, yes. uh, the ringmaster. Uh, can you consider that when you work with pro wrestler, they became uh, true legends? I'm sorry, when I worked with who? Uh, can you consider that uh, when you work with pro wrestler, uh, they become true legends? Because uh, we're talking about you started your the the careers of the Undertaker and, uh, and Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ah, uh, well, I mean, you know, no, I don't think I had any any anything to contribute to, to their success. I mean, you know, the, the in, in in the wrestling business, we call it the rub. It was kind of like. You know, when, when somebody comes along and, and, and you know you're, you've got big plans for them, oftentimes to get give them a kickstart, they'll put them with somebody that's already highly established. Mm -hmm. and, and that would have been me in, in both cases. And, but, but as far as uh, what, I, what I would have had to done with their careers, you know, was 
minimal. You know, I was just a, I was just there to help them get going. That's a humble uh, answer, but uh, that's a, a a perfect answer. But uh, as you said, if you don't uh, uh, kick your own ass, y you can uh, do uh, your own thing. So uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, of all the WrestleMania events you participate in, which one of your top was uh, your favorite? Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think the one that I enjoyed the most was WrestleMania six. Okay, against Jack Roberts. I wrestled Jake the Snake. Okay, Toronto Sky. Yeah. Uh, and we had a great match. Uh, and oh, yeah. Jake and I are. Uh, We have a lot in common. We we're both, you know, we, we both were raised in the business. His father was a wrestler and a and, yeah. a, and a promoter, right. and my father was a wrestler. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and another uh, another family that we could put in there is the Hart family. Uh, I, I can't remember where it was, but uh, we were doing a TV shoot, and um, they had uh, me and Bret Hart. Uh, have about a, go out and have about a, a tw like a 20 minute match to to a draw, and and so when when and, and that's the first time and the only time that Brett and I ever got to wrestle each other, and so when we came out of the ring and we got in the back, you know, like so you remember, uh, Pat Patterson was like Vince's right hand man, and of course Pat himself was a very good champion and and wrestler in his own in his, in his own career and he just went he went crazy he says oh my gosh what a match he says you guys have been working a lot together and, and we looked at each other and I said, <laughs> we said pat that's the first time we ever touched and he couldn't <laughs> believe it that was the first time that we'd ever had a match but the reason i think that we gelled so well is because of our background okay. because we both came up And were raised in a different era, mm -hmm. uh, and and, and uh, you know, and and again by you know, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to explain. You know, yeah. Even today, I you know, I you know, people say, "Well, who you know, who's your favorite today?" I said, "I'll be honest with you. I don't watch it anymore. <laughs> it's hard for me to watch wrestling now because, um, you know, it's it's totally it's, different. Well, it's, it's not the same thing." You know, I, I, you know, I love going to, I love a good movie, right? Yeah. But tell me a good story. If the movie tells me a good story, man, I get into it. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a bunch of boom, boom, bang, bang, you know, yeah. you know what? Yeah, forget yeah. it. Well, that's what's happened to wrestling. No, oh, that's the same thing. A lot know. of boom, boom, bang, bang. And, and, and tell me a good story. I'm still waiting. Yes, sir. For our pre-closing segment, I'll give you a name in a few words. Tell us something about them, all right? So the first one was is sorry, Sid the Vicious. Uh, a unique, unique individual. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he had a lot of talent, and uh, he was accused of being very short-tempered. But I. I never had any problem with shit. So, you know, oh, it's okay in my book. <laughs> the second one, the late Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Oh my gosh. You talk about a kid who he had it, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like I could look at guys today and, you know, I tell all, you know, you can teach kids everything, yeah. but the one thing you can't teach anybody is what we call charisma. Yeah. You either have it or you don't. And and Bray Wyatt, he had it. Yes, he was a creative genius. Yes, he really was. And the last one, uh, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I'm the greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> so thank you so much for the interview for the ending segment as usual my partner Benoit Nostra da Ben it's all about the French prophet you know because in in, in Europe uh, there was a guy named uh, Nostradamus 
and that's why he has his nickname and he will try to predict the future of our guests go ahead my friend <laughs> first of all mr dbsc thank you so much for the interview it was a, an honor a pleasure uh, you were my fa my favorite ill wrestler when i was young well, okay thank my, you. oh yeah uh, you're welcome My prediction is uh, you're going to be a, a two-time WWE uh, Hall of Fame inducted. Uh, you uh, and IRS as Money Inc. or maybe as a manager. Well, who knows? Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess I, I hope you're right. <laughs> and, and hey guys, I, and again, um, I, it's been a pleasure coming on your show. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been in and out of Canada so many times. And I had not been to Canada for a long time. And I, just last week. Yeah, I know that. I, I, I flew into Montreal yeah. and, I, I, yeah. and, and went to the event that was in Ottawa. Yeah. And I, I had a good time. I met a lot of the fans. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, but, man, man, it was just a quick trip. I was in. I was over there. And, and then I was gone. So I didn't, I didn't even have time to go out to a good uh, French style restaurant and have a good meal. So yes, the smoked meat is Montreal awesome. smoked meat. <laughs> the Montreal You're right, meat exactly. is awesome. <laughs> you, you said it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the interview, my friend.